Hey all and welcome to another long awaited tutorial. In this video, I'll take you through each step taken to create this amazing looking beach scene with the perfect wave for surfing. There's a lot involved when it comes to creating the wave, but I think all the effort is definitely worth it in the end when you get results like this. Let's not waste any more time and get started building. All good dioramas start with a good base. For this model, I decided to make the base using 7mm plywood cut to the desired dimensions for the scene. It ended up measuring 40cm wide by 60cm long. To add some extra structural integrity and to help prevent the plywood from warping over time, strips of pine were glued and nailed to the underside of the plywood. I also make sure to add some cross braces to prevent lateral warping when the diorama is being handled and moved. With the base complete, I roughly trace out the design of the scene onto the board. I have a good idea on what features I want to include and how the scene will eventually be laid out. I strongly suggest looking at plenty of photos online to get a good reference of what will and won't look realistic. Rock features are added by making them using some of the knock rock moulds. Plaster of Paris is mixed to a thin paste and before pouring the plaster I make sure to pre-wet the moulds. The knock package doubles as a brace for the moulds which is very handy. The mould is simply placed on top making it perfectly level and ready for the plaster. Tapping the mould helps to get the plaster into all the small cracks and also helps the bubbles raise to the surface. After a few hours the rocks can be removed from the moulds. There's no right or wrong way of placing the rocks, I just move them around until I find something that looks natural. The rest of the beach area is made with Sculptor Mold, or in my case this is Sculptor Modelling Mix from Officeworks. It's basically the same stuff. It's mixed into a thick paste and applied over the beach area. It's then manipulated into a shape that resembles a sloping beach. It needs to be sloping down so we can get a nice looking water effect when the resin is poured. The Sculptor Mold also acts as the glue to hold our rock castings. Just be sure to pre-wet the moulds before pressing them down, otherwise they won't actually stick to the plaster. As the plaster begins to harden, I continuously smooth it with my fingers. Because this is a beach, I want the surface to be as smooth as I can get it. Sand texture will be added later, and if we want any rough areas along the beach we can add them later. For now I want everything to be nice and smooth. Resin has a tendency to find the smallest of holes, and given that I used nails to add the wood bracing, I'll need to seal the base properly. To do this I give it about 3 coats of Woodland Scenics Flex Paste. While the paste is still wet, I use a sponge and stipple it over the area. This removes any brush strokes. To paint the rocks, I first give them a coat of Vallejo light grey, covering the entire area. The second step is a dark grey wash, using a mixture of Vallejo US blue grey and a few drops of black. This layer is also applied over the entire area, however because it's a wash that has been diluted with water, it tends to flow into the cracks. Then using a paper towel, I dab it over the rocks to remove the excess wash from the raised surfaces. Lastly, off-white is dry brush to highlight the sharp edges. Joe Sonia's opal is the colour I chose to paint the beach. It's a very light cream colour and should match the sand texture I'll be using later quite well. It's painted over the surface of the beach and slightly below where the waterline will be located. The rest of the area that will be submerged underwater is painted with Vallejo Dark Sea Grey. To simulate the gradual slope of the sand as the water deepens, 
I use the airbrush to fade the edge of the dark grey. For a bit of extra variation and detail, I add some random lines of a lighter grey colour over the dark grey. Most of this will be hidden under the resin, however there is a very subtle variation that adds a bit of realism. Now for the sand. For this I use a 50-50 mix of corn silk grout and plaster of Paris. The plaster is basically there only to lighten the colour of the grout as the grout on its own was a little too dark for the sand colour I was after. To apply the sand mixture, I use an old spray can lid and a stocking. But before applying it, I brush over some diluted Mod Podge on the steep hills first. This helps the grout stick to those areas and not just pile up at the bottom of the slope. Now the sand is applied over the beach until there's complete coverage. Any sand in unwanted areas is removed before gluing. Also before applying the glue, I use a small paintbrush to add tiny footprints along the beach. To fix all this in place, I use isopropyl alcohol and diluted Mod Podge matte. The alcohol is first applied to pre-wet the area and then the diluted Mod Podge is applied. To make the glue mixture, I use one part Mod Podge matte, three parts water and a few drops of dish soap. Any excess is dabbed away with a paper towel. Now for one of my favourite steps, applying the static grass. For this I'm using the Woodland Scenics Static King, along with some Knock 6mm Wild Grass and Mod Podge Matte to fix it all down. I really like the Static King because it can stand upright on its own, making it very easy to pour the grass into the hopper and it can stand off to the side ready to be used. Glue is applied anywhere you want grass. I find to get a more realistic look, I randomly apply the glue whilst also leaving patches where no glue has been applied. This gives a much more natural and realistic look. Next, simply touch the grounding wire close to the area, turn on the applicator and shake away. It's truly amazing how much of a difference the static grass makes. I can't recommend it more highly. It's definitely my favourite tool for building scenery. Just keep working along until the area has the desired coverage. To remove excess grass you can either tip the diorama over and tap the base or you could use a vacuum with a stocking attached to collect the excess grass. Once the grass is down and before the glue is dry I tease certain areas to give it a rough appearance. Additionally, I add more sand texture in and around the grass to help blend the grass into the sand. This also adds some rough sand areas and gives a more natural, uneven surface close to the bushes. I also add some fine leaf texture around the grass areas as well, using some ground foam. This is all fixed down using the alcohol and glue combination shown earlier. MIG oil brusher dust and some enamel odorless thinners is used to add the wet shoreline. Only a small amount of oil paint is needed and it is diluted quite heavily with the thinners. A little goes a long way and I can always add more later if desired. The mix is brushed along the shore and the thin mixture wicks over the surface. If it's not quite dark enough, once it dries you can apply more layers until you reach the desired effect. To pour the resin we'll need to contain it. For this I simply run some masking tape along the edge of the diorama and thoroughly press it down. A bead of wood glue is also run along the lower edge of the tape for added measure. The last thing we want is resin leaking everywhere. Now for the big transformation, adding resin. I chose to use clear epoxy resin for this job. It does well with large pores, however it can get quite hot, so you need to consider this if pouring over a foam base. I roughly calculated that I'd need about 500ml. The resin is poured, two parts resin and one part hardener. 
you've got about 5 minutes working time, so you don't need to rush. Earlier I did a few colour tests and decided to use a mix of Royal Blue and Cali Green. For every 70 grams of resin, I had 3 drops of Royal Blue and 2 drops of Cali Green. Make sure it's thoroughly mixed before pouring. Don't worry about bubbles as well, we'll remove those later. Overall the thickness of the layer I'm pouring is about 5mm thick. As the resin settles it'll gradually climb up the beach, so you want to avoid pouring the layer too deep, otherwise it could obscure the entire beach before you know it. Most of the bubbles will pop on their own, however if there are any stubborn bubbles, using a butane torch will get rid of them. After about 12 hours or so, the resin has hardened enough for us to continue working. The lip that is left behind after removing the tape can be trimmed away with a sharp blade. Now for the wave. Using some baking paper, I trace the rough shape of the shoreline and trim away the excess. This will act as a template for the wave. The shape of the wave I plan to make is also drawn onto the baking paper. To create the rough form of the wave, I use some Sculptor Mold. This is the bottom layer and is used to build up the wave to get its initial shape started. In a similar way to how we created the beach, I use my hands to push around and manipulate the Sculptor Mold until I get the desired shape and then I continue to smooth it out as it hardens. Once it's hard enough, I remove the paper and place the wave onto a piece of glass. To create the final shape of the wave, I'm using air drying clay. Small pieces are pressed onto the wave and pressed down. You may find you need some water to help blend the pieces together and smoothen out the clay. This process is repeated until the entire wave is covered and a nice smooth wavy appearance is left behind after smoothing it out. It's probably not necessary, however, where I was expecting white water, I stippled the brush to give a rough texture. Once dry with the wave remaining on the glass, some latex rubber is used to make the mould. It's a straightforward process. I applied three thick layers to start with, waiting for each layer to dry for about two hours before moving on to the next coat. On the fourth coat, I added a layer of jute twine cloth to give the mould more structural integrity. A thin layer is initially applied under the cloth, and then the cloth is placed over the wave and more latex is applied over the top. After this layer has been fully covered, I again wait for it to dry, and then add an additional two coats. In the end, there was a total of six layers of latex that make up the mould. Because this is quite a large mould, I'll need to create a shell for it. Once the mould has been released from the master, I place it back over the wave. To make the shell, I'm using plaster cloth. Each layer of cloth overlaps the previous layer, so essentially you're getting two layers. Then a third layer is laid down over the top. For added strength, I also mix up some extra plaster of Paris and spread that over as well. When the shell has had time to harden it can be removed. A sharp knife was needed to help free it from the glass. Don't forget to clean the rubber mould before pouring the resin. Getting the shell to sit flat is very important. To help ensure I've got a completely flat surface, I use the Micromark Digital Level. The rubber mould can now be inserted into the shell and we're ready for some resin. The same resin is used and it's mixed with exactly the same ratios. The same colours were also used, however I accidentally added a bit too much royal blue. It resulted in the colour of the wave being a bit darker and more blue as opposed to the blue-green. 
However, once the water effects are added later, the color difference will be less noticeable. Pour the resin to fill the mold without going past the top. You want to do this nice and slow, giving the resin a chance to self-level. Bubbles are removed again using the torch. After the resin has had time to cure, the mold is removed. I deliberately made the wave slightly longer than the diorama. That way, once the wave has been positioned, I can use a razor saw to carefully cut the excess flush with the edge of the diorama. For the second time, I reapply the tape around the edges. The wave is glued to the surface using more resin. Again, it's the same as earlier, although it's just a much smaller amount. And this time I used the eyedropper to add the color so I wouldn't accidentally add too many drops. A small amount of resin gets applied first and then the wave is gently pressed down on top, trying to avoid introducing bubbles underneath the wave. Once it's on, I press firmly and the excess resin oozes out from the edges. The resin is then brushed over the wave to give it an ultra glossy look. The resin is also brushed right along the surface up to the beach sand. You may need some more resin, but this layer is only a very thin layer, so you shouldn't need much resin at all. And for the last time we can remove the tape. Again, you might find you need to remove the sharp edges from around the tape. The ripples and white water are made using water ripples and water waves from Woodland Scenics. The water ripples is a thick product and it's applied with an ice cream stick. Only a thin layer is needed and I stipple the layer gently with the stick as I move along the surface of the water. As the product begins to dry, it will hold its shape better so you may find that after applying the water ripples, after about 10 minutes they tend to fade away. You may need to go back and re-stipple some areas to get the final look you're after. Once that layer is dry, I can start on the white water. The white water is made using a combination of Woolen Scenics Water Waves, Knox Snow and Vallejo White. The Water Waves product is added to the snow to create a thick paste. It tends to be a dirty off-white colour, so to bring back some of its vibrancy, I add the white acrylic paint. The paste is applied anywhere that there would be white water. It does well holding its shape, so I build it up and use the brush to stipple a rough texture to it. By stippling out the paste, the acrylic paint that was added creates a nice fade effect, showing areas of recently disturbed water. It can also be built up to create large splashes of foamy water. White water is also added right along the shoreline showing the path of the oncoming wave. The surfing character is actually a model of the Silver Surfer that was downloaded from Thingiverse and scaled to be HO scale. It was printed on the Anycubic Photon 3D printer. As the model is, he doesn't have any shorts, so using some modeling clay, I carefully carved out some shorts for him and gave him a coat of paint. Fixing the figures down is easily done with a small amount of detail tack from Micromark. It dries tacky, making it easier to move and change the position of figures without damaging the scenery. Also, don't forget the small wave created by the surfboard as he moves along the surface of the wave. Unfortunately, this spot was a mistake. However, I can hide it with a small dog. Other figures and vehicles are added as well. I had some leftover trees from an older video, so I decided to use some of those and create some small bushes along the sand dune. I've also used a few palm trees as well, 
which also feature in their own video tutorial. And the final step is painting the edges black to help frame the seam and we're done. This is a great little scene with so much visual interest. I could stare at it all day. The process of creating the wave is a long and intense process. However, after putting in all the effort, I think with results like this, it was certainly worth it. I hope you enjoyed watching, and if you'd like to help support the channel, you can check out my Patreon page. I've also started a new Instagram page where I share fan artworks of completed dioramas and updates. So if you haven't already checked it out, be sure to have a look. Cheers, and thanks for watching.